keep in mind, you know, these cultural expressions and stuff, well, who are they? That's the opposition that I mentioned in part one that Prime Minister Yusuf said we had to get rid of because they were the op they were opposition, those clans that different cultural, rep you know, expressions. It's really, really sad all the way around because what this led to was the greatest humanitarian crisis possibly on the planet, definitely in Africa, much bigger than the uh, much more publicized Darfur region, which, uh, which you know, Incidentally, of course, is also a terrible tragedy. I'm not trying to take anything away from that. Between January and May of 2007, there were more refugees from Somalia than any other place on Earth, including Darfur and Iraq. There are regions in Somalia like the uh, Afuye region, that's A F Y I O O E, I want to say, uh, where the malnutrition rate's at 19%. The threshold for emergency, according to the UN, is 15. And Darfur's at 13. You hear terrible, terrible stories at the end of the, you know, constantly of, of refugee camps where people are treated terribly. They're like medieval. People are selling selling shade to sick people. They have to pay rent to sit in shade and things like that. And all, Not that Somalia was just, you know, FTD 1-800-Flowers before the invasion or anything like that. I'm not trying to dress it up. But a semblance of order had been recreated, and the Somalian people were in favor of it at this point. If, if, the, if the oppression and repression had gotten worse, then, then the Somalian people could have made up their own minds about what they wanted at, at, at that point. When it, um, when, it, when it comes to occupation, you have, you have a duty to not engage in systemic human rights abuses. However, as we'll see, Ethiopia was already engaging in constant human rights abuses of their own at home. We'll get into that in a different part. But I want to sum this up by saying the occupation continues to this day with U.S. support. U.S. airstrikes were undertaken in January, killing between uh, 20 and 70 people, depending on you know different sources that you can look at. The U.S. ostensibly probably still has forces on the ground in Somalia, which we're tacitly supporting. Ethiopia continues to engage in the same human rights abuses that are exacerbating already the worst humanitarian crisis ever. I mean, well, not ever, but, you know, in, in Africa and, like I said, in the, and possibly in the world. In Mogadishu alone, 1.5 million people were displaced in the year 2007. That's about 70% of the pre-invasion population. Ethiopia is still there. They're there right now with U.S. support, they were always there with U.S. support. And I implore everyone to stave off this humanitarian disaster by getting the Ethiopians out and allowing Somalians to rebuild, allowing Somalians to effectively construct whatever government they deem necessary to get order back, you know, get order back for them at this moment. Because even if they build a government that's bad for now, that's very tyrannical, they will overthrow it in time. They will do so. But they can't do so as long as, as long as the humanitarian crisis exists, as long as Ethiopia is there. Eric LaRoche, in charge of the humanitarian uh, um, objectives of the United Nations, said if this was happening in Darfur, there'd be a big uproar about it. But since it's Somalia, you know, no one says a thing because no one seems to really care about the Somali people. The Darfur people, the Darfur, Save Darfur campaign, and I'm not against, you know, you know, you know, dealing with the, the obviously terrible genocidal complexities that are going on there, the terrible things that are going on there. They have a billion dollar operation and ten thousand aid workers. Somalia gets two hundred fifty grand, and in very few aid workers. It's up to us to go to Ethiopian consulates to send handwritten letters to our congressmen, representatives, senators, everyone. It's up to us to take to the streets and demand of our legally elected representatives that they stop the support for Ethiopia because just the minimal amount of pressure from the United States, just the threat of cutting off that beloved aid would, you know, and getting out of there ourselves, you know, both of those things would stop Ethiopia in a second. Ethiopia would, would withdraw. I, I just want, you know, just take a second. It won't take very long at all, but just, just find, find a moment in your heart Amidst great catastrophe and amidst great hoopla in this election year to remember the people of Somalia that apparently no one has deemed worthy to care about.